He is a uh, part of the Pro Football Talk world with Mike Florio every single day that launches our day on NBC Sports on Peacock. And he's also the host of the Chris Sims Unbuttoned podcast. Chris Sims, how you been, Chris? I'm doing good, Rich, man. How are you, man? It has. It's been a long time. I don't think I've seen you since um, Super Bowl 50, right? That When we were out there in San Francisco. Yeah. So it's good to catch up with you, man. I uh, hope you're well. Well, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I didn't mean for it to be once every five years, but uh, let's, <laughs> okay. let's have a good chat right here. Um, so no let's, let's get right into it. I'll give you the floor. I'm, I, I uh, was traveling to work today when you were on with Florio. So. What what is what is your take on Dak being signed to uh, this uh, very lucrative contract, Chris Sims? Right, I think the first thing I mean, wow, about the money, right? I mean, just you know that that, that popped off to me right away. Four years, get the hundred and sixty million dollars. But I think like my base thought more than anything is, I mean, the Cowboys had no choice here. You don't let what I look at as a top ten quarterback like definitive top 10 quarterback in the NFL, fringe top five-ish type quarterback, walk out the door, not only because of the talent and the things he has, but also the intangibles he brings. So he brings tangibles on the field that he probably doesn't get enough credit for because it's not quite as sexy as Mahomes or Rodgers or Russell Wilson, and it doesn't have that flair, but the results are really damn good. And the leadership, what he brings to the locker room, being the face of the franchise. He has all of that that goes with it, let alone, Rich, I'll say this too. I mean, you know, I mean, the Cowboys are, it it didn't look good last year. And I think the day, I mean, their defense, of course, is going to be, you know, a major work in progress this offseason. The running game is not what it was two, three years ago. Zeke's not the same back. That offensive line's not as dominant. The team right now, their bright spot is their receivers, their passing game. And we saw without an elite quarterback in there last year, you know, they they weren't nearly as fun to watch, explosive at an offense or anything like that. So, you know, with Dak Prescott, definite top 10 quarterback, glad to see him get paid like that. And I think that Jerry Jones just realized, I can't let this guy go right now. No chance, and not a way that not the way the team is set up currently here going into the 2021 season. I agree with you, Chris. I'm not going to get caught up in that whole business of is Dak worth it? He is worth it because he did what he has done, and right. and and it is his time. He has the leverage. He has the ability, and that's what the market bears. Certainly, if the Cowboys had played, you know, played it the way that they played it over the last couple of years. So I'm I'm not going to get caught up in all of that. But now it I'm is time. You. It is now time to win, though. In the in in this four years, he's got to do that. He's got to win it all. I mean, if they come away with no Lombardi trophies through these four years, then it is not a success. Um, and there's different shades of success, but not at the ultimate success. So, how do they do that? Do they have the right coach? Do you think moving forward? How does McCarthy now? Because we did see the first four weeks uh, of of him with McCarthy, right. but. That's kind of an outlier because they were down fifty to nothing in the at halftime of pretty much every single one of those games. So, what do you think? Yeah, Chris? no doubt. And then, I mean, he had some you know man- game management issues early on. Listen, Mike McCarthy, I think is a real good head coach. I always questioned his offensive game planning a little bit with Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. But the good thing that he's done here since since he's been in Dallas, you know, it's a collaborative effort with him and Kellen Moore. So I like that aspect. But they're gonna. You know, you're, you're, you're right with everything you said. I mean, hey, the pressure's on Dak Prescott now. There's no doubt about that. You know, when you sign this type of deal, and if you start off one and four or don't get to the playoffs, uh, you know, three out of four years here, it's all you're going to hear if you're him. It's, oh, well, you took all the money. There's not enough money to, to make a complete team around you and, and all those issues. So that pressure is there. It's going to be on him, especially because of the things we talked about, too. The strength of their team are those wide receivers and him throwing the football. So they're going to have to carry it. You can put those weapons up there as far as that wide receiver up with just about anybody in football. It's that talented across the board. Now, I like that they got Dan Quinn in there. You know, that was the biggest issue last year. They got a coach in there that really coached 3-4 style of football, and they had 4-3 style defensive football players. So the players in the scheme did not mesh. So they have a lot of work to do. There's no doubt. The good thing is they don't have a huge salary cap number this year for Dak. We don't know exactly where the salary cap's going to be. But when I look at the Cowboys more than anything, Rich, it is about the defense. 
I mean, there's really the front. DeMarcus Lawrence has been a little underwhelming for what he's paid. There's no doubt about that. They got to get some disruptors and difference makers on their front four. They're going to play that Seattle scheme defense. They don't have a Cam Chancellor or an Earl Thomas type of guy to, in the back end there. So they got a lot of issues on the defensive side of the ball. Hopefully now with Dak signed up, they don't have to worry about the offense and they can fix that. Chris Sims here, Pro Football Talk, Live PFT Live uh, co-host and also the uh, host of Chris Sims' Unbuttoned Podcast, where all podcasts are gotten. All right, let's get into it. How uh, I mean, uh, uh, how, how much of the name Zach Wilson have you heard on uh, social media and on your phone? In the last week, well, Chris, I mean, I you know, not as much as you're an idiot, you're stupid, you only have this job because your dad, all of those. I mean, you know, yeah. So I, 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 I've been criticized, of course, and it's it's a, it's same old, same old. It's like rinse, cycle, repeat for me with this conversation. <laughs> I took the same crap last year when I said Herbert was better than Tua. You know, I um, so Zach Wilson again. Just I think what everybody takes away from it more than anything is they think it's an indictment on Trevor Lawrence. And it's not. Trevor Lawrence is awesome. I love it. He's worthy of being the number one pick. It's the last thing I wrote on my sentence. This guy's a baller. He's definitely worthy of the number one pick. I wrote that in my notes. Only thing is, is I think just Zach Wilson's better. I, I think Zach Wilson has Mahomes and Rodgers ish type qualities about his game. First off, he's a more he's a more consistent thrower to me, Rich than Trevor Lawrence. And I just mean, with there's a 10-yard out, a 15-yard comeback, a 20-yard in cut. He, he will consistently hit the bullseye more than Lawrence. But I think what it takes it to the other level for me is when there is nothing there and everybody is covered at BYU, he does have that magician-like quality like a Mahomes or Rodgers to buy time and then throw a 30-yard laser, you know, all over the field, whether he's jumping in the air, throwing across his body, you know, can't move in the pocket. So I knew Zach Wilson was talented. I'm a casual college football watcher on Saturdays, but I was blown away with what I saw in film. I didn't go into it going, oh, I'm going to shake up the draft yeah. world and put him number one over Trevor Lawrence. I had Burrow won last year. I had Kyler Murray won the year before that. This is one that just really jumped out to me, and I'm excited about what I saw from Zach Wilson. So let's let's dig into this a, a little bit more, focusing on yeah. on Trevor Lawrence. Do you think that there, um, you know, is going to be a conversation in Jacksonville similar to what you have unpacked here? Uh, because you know, because yeah. you know, you know how this process works. Every single snap is going to be ground down to the right. to to something that you can't even see anymore. Even you know uh, the the story that Jim Moore Senior told me is that they grinded tape on Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf literally to the last minute. You know, so that's the yeah. way these things go, despite the hindsight. Uh, but we also no know doubt. you know we also know Urban didn't just take a bite at the NFL apple just because you know so right. so what right. do you think is going to be the conversation in Jacksonville on this very subject when it comes down to it, I, Chris? I, I mean, I think there could be some conversation, but I think you said it right. There's too many signs that point towards it's going to be Trevor Lawrence there. Hey, one, let's just take it from the business aspect. He's a huge draw in that part of the country. He grew up in Georgia. He played there at South Carolina and Clemson. You know, this is SEC country, and he's been in a lot of big-time college football games and played awesome in them. So from that standpoint, it makes sense. You said it, the Urban Meyer thing. He took that job thinking, hey, I'm going to get Trevor Lawrence at number one. You know, I'm sure they've looked at it and gone, man, Zach Wills. I mean, I don't know how you can't look at Zach Wilson and go, whoa, holy crap, look at that throw, look at this play. But – but I also, this is where I go, I expect it to be Trevor Lawrence with the number one pick because of the offense they're going to run. I know Daryl Bevel's the offensive coordinator there, but I think you're going to still see a lot of Urban Meyer college stuff in that offense. And I do think Trevor Lawrence is, is built for that with the ability to you know run the read option, the RPOs, all of that, a lot of screens. Oh, let's fake the screen. Let's throw a 30-yard ball down the right sideline. You know, let's fake the slant, throw the ball deep down the sideline that way. He's got a powerful arm. He can make every throw. He's a great back shoulder thrower, and there's a lot of throws outside the numbers. And size is a skill. His ability, like a Justin Herbert last year, you know, when there's people around him in the pocket, he's so big he can throw right over the top of them. There's something to that. 
You know, Brady can do that. Mahomes can't. You know, so there, those are things I do look at. I expect him to be number one because of all those reasons. I really do. But I also think that when I say that, I think Zach Wilson probably fits into more systems and is more NFL drop-back pass game-ready than Trevor Lawrence is at this point of his career, let alone I think Zach Wilson's talent's a little bit better too. Chris Sims here on the Rich Eisen Show. And, you know, uh, I guess you were 10 or 11 when uh, when your dad was attempting to win a second Super Bowl and then got hurt. And um, so yep. you, you, you had a front-row seat to, to know about what a crucible it is to be a, a New York City quarterback. And then here comes Zach Wilson now sitting there for the Jets. So I guess it's more of a germane conversation to ask you with all your perspective – um, the, what the conversation is in the Jets building rather than the Jaguars building. So w- right. with, with Darnold there and the second overall pick, and then who the heck knows when the Texans might you know, smell whatever coffee that uh, Deshaun Watson is telling them to smell. Uh, what do you think the, the conversation is here with Robert Sala bringing in uh, the Shanahan system? What do you think about all this? Yeah, I, Chris. It's. I mean, they're 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 sitting pretty, is what I do think. More than anything, they got a lot of options. You know, the the first thing, let's hit the Deshaun Watson part. Yep. To me, that makes no sense from the from the Jets standpoint. Listen, I I love Deshaun Watson. He's one of the five best quarterbacks in football. But what are the Jets going to do? Take Deshaun Watson, trade away all their draft picks and assets so they can be four and twelve with Deshaun Watson? <laughs> Deshaun Watson, just like the Houston Texans. You know, that to me is where. The Jets have a, a major rebuild in front of them right now. So that, to me, does not make sense. Sam Darnold, I don't, I'm not giving up on Sam Darnold. I, I was one a month ago before I started studying these quarterbacks. I went, I got no issue if the Jets stay with him. He'll fit that Shanahan, Mike LaFleur system that you're talking about. And, again, I've seen enough good from him to, to still think you can go to a playoffs and get to a Super Bowl with Sam Darnold. You know, like I always say to Mike Florio, when you're surrounded by crap and you got crap all around you, <laughs> hey, you're going to smell like crap and get some crap on you too. I mean, it's just hard to look good with the support system he's had around him. But I think my <laughs> ultimate thought is this, Rich. Yes. I just look at it and I go, how could Robert Sala and Mike LaFleur not be looking at Zach Wilson and Mike LaFleur not be looking at his brother and Matt LaFleur and going, wait, I'm going to run that same system in Green Bay, and that guy up there just had 48 touchdown passes and mm-hmm. five interceptions, and they don't lose games in the regular season. And that, to me, is where Zach Wilson is the perfect fit for that Shanahan system. Play action, aggressive passes, all the movement, the boot legs. He is an amazing thrower on the run. I mean, it's Mahomes and Rodgers-ish when it comes to that. So when I look at it, I just go, man, that just makes too much sense to me. And with all those draft picks, you got a chance to really build something and build a nucleus that can come up the ranks and excite the fans here in New York about the Jets. And that, that's what, at least that's what my, my, uh, my move would be, Rich. Yeah, I was chopping it up yesterday with Peter King, another one of our colleagues here on NBC Sports, Chris, yesterday, and that maybe the Jets could move out of the two, right? Um, right. And, you know, let's just say I just threw out the Eagles, for instance, because, you know, yeah. they have a history of moving up to number two to take a quarterback. But they did it. You know, they, they, they hopped a couple of times. They made a trade with Miami to then eventually leap up to go get Wentz at number two. They're already at the ninth position, as we know, uh, thanks to benching Jalen Hurts in game 256. So um, maybe the Jets yeah. can move down to nine and take somebody else potentially at the next spot amass more draft choices and build around that no person doubt. uh who they could maybe even sit behind Donald for a year or not even do that get Donald more protection L- the reason why i ask this is who else is out there quarterback was that you think might be worthy of a first round grade that could make a team uh highly successful if not a champion eventually I'm not name wilson or lawrence chris sims right right yeah you know and i think if the jets do that You know, first off, it's risky because, like you said, I mean, hey, okay, the Eagles trade up. You know, you got Carolina at number eight. They're obviously in the quarterback conversation. They'd be a team I'd look at that might want to trade up to pick number two and take a guy like Zach Wilson. I mean, they're they're secretly kind of set up with weapons on offense with Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore, a pretty good tight end, McCaffrey. I mean, that would excite me. And I'm still not putting them out of that Deshaun Watson trade mix there, really, either. But – I think if they make that move there, 
you know, where they trade down. Hey, I, I love Mac Jones. I, I'm the one I put my neck out there more than any. Forget Zach Wilson over Trevor Lawrence is Kellen Mond. All right, that's another one at number four who I love. I look at him as a first-round talent and prospect and everything about it. But just as particular to the Jets there, Rich, I just think if they make that type of move, then you sit there and you keep Sam Darnold. You go with that. He does fit that system. Mm -hmm. And now you build around him and finally get him some receivers and some, you know, a top-end running back and some more protection on the offensive line. And you build that way. But my heart of hearts, I just really think it's going to be Zach Wilson at two. And then I expect them to trade Sam Darnold. And, then, you know, I've been saying for weeks, I, I think a Sam Darnold of the 49ers thing would, would make a whole lot of sense to me in a lot of ways. But, you know, the, uh, the, the other quarterbacks, Mac Jones was blown away by him. Better prospect than Tua last year coming out in the draft. No kidding. Yes, I know. Yeah, I, I, I look at him and just go, first thing is, the throwing is off the charts. Now, I don't mean like his arm just goes, wow, what great power, but it has plenty of power. It's more power than Joe Burrow had last year coming out in the draft. And just like Burrow, I've never seen a guy who can go through reads and process information at this college level since I've been involved in this side of the business. Huh. That's where I'm blown away. Um, and, you know, I know everybody talks about the athletic stuff and, Oh, yeah, I wish he was a little faster, but I don't watch the film and go, oh, my gosh, he's, he's in quicksand. This guy, he's a liability. He can't move. He has incredible feet in the pocket, and he can run for six and seven when you need him to in the NFL. So he is a guy I look at that would be, I would think would be very much in play for Carolina at number eight. And I think it's certainly a top 10, top 12 draft pick in the NFL draft. All right, before we let Chris Sims go, Chris Brockman, can you ask him the poll question that we're going to post up at Rich Eisen Show, please? Chris. Yeah, Chris, throwing this up right now. Which quarterback from the 2018 draft class would you next give a long-term contract? Baker, Josh Allen, Lamar, none of the above. What do you got? Ooh, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. You know, first off, I was a huge Josh Allen fan coming out in the draft. Josh Allen is a superstar. He is in that level of Mahomes. You know, look, like, look at the NFL, we're talking about the draft. It's still about your ability to make throws in the pocket. You look at the final four. It's Brady's and Rodgers. It's Mahomes and Allen. Allen is special. He is in the, 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 the upper class of the NFL, and I think he is a no-brainer. He'd be the guy I re-up first. Chris, thanks for the time. Let's do this more often. I'm, I, I plan on speaking to you before Super Bowl 60. Like, how about in a couple of weeks? How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds good. You let me know. I'm down, Rich. Anytime, I appreciate buddy. that, Chris. Thank you. Right back at you. Chris Sims Unbuttoned is his podcast. And, of course, you can catch him with Florio every single day to kick off the NBC Sports on Peacock lineup on PFT Live. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.